On rescue 911, a fiery collision sends flames hundreds of feet into the sky. It was mind blowing. It was just awesome. Watch as firefighters take the heat to save a little girl trapped in the inferno. The firefighters were roasting, but they didn't back off. They just stood their ground. 911. We begin down under, just outside South Auckland, New Zealand, as 32-year-old Gaylene Young was giving her daughter and two other young relatives a ride into town. Much of the footage in this story was taped as events unfolded on the evening of August 9th, 1990. That night we were driving down the road to Manukau City to the shopping centre. And then I missed the, the turn off. So I stopped. I was just dropping them off. Okay, just go over there. I'll see you then. Bye. Among the girls was 12 year old Shirley Young, Gaylene's only child. David Petera spotted her in the parking lot as he was leaving his car. The kid yells out, Mum, wait, you know. I took notice of it because I know the car is not supposed to sit out there. The flame just was instant the minute it had it. It was the car that blew up first. All the petrol spilling out of the tank. And I thought, the tank is going to go any minute. No. 381, multiple calls to car versus petrol tanker. Rescue units with the Manukau Fire Station were immediately dispatched to the scene, including station officer Graham Haycock. I said to my driver, where exactly is that corner? And he said to me, Graham, look straight ahead. And sure enough, there it was. It was a fire that just kept on going and going and going. Senior firefighter Royd Kennedy was among the first rescue workers on the scene. At this stage, you couldn't see the truck. You couldn't see a car. All there was was a huge ball of fire. It was mind-blowing. It was just awesome. With the help of the tanker's driver, David had found Gaylene and pulled her from the burning car. She's just screaming her head off and she was crying. I'll never ever want to live through that again. Never ever. We could only get within approximately 30 feet of the tanker because of the intensity of the heat. There was a river of fuel on fire running into the shopping centre. While I was looking around, I found a woman in the car park lying there, very badly burned. All she said was, my baby, my baby's in the car. I assumed that the baby was dead. I grabbed Roy and said, come on. And we started towards the back of the tanker.
the heat was becoming even greater. The swirling smoke was down to ground level, hiding everything. And for a split second, I just looked at the fire. And instantly, I saw it, just for a second, a hand in the smoke. There was someone there, right under the tanker. When we continue, the big question was, how were we going to get her out? Whether we would get her out or alive was anyone's guess. Ride along with America's finest paramedics and enter the chaotic world of street medicine, where courage and compassion is the name of the game. Keep this thing together, I promise, okay? Watch Paramedics next on Discovery Health Channel. In the small town near Auckland, New Zealand, a semi carrying more than 8,700 gallons of gasoline had slammed into the rear of a car, leaving both vehicles in flames. Hidden by the swirling smoke and fire, 12-year-old Shirley Young was trapped beneath the burning wreckage of the tanker truck when she was spotted by firefighter Royd Kennedy. Royd took off. He was heading straight into the fire. And under the truck, there's this child crushed by a big wheel. I could feel her feet protruding from under the tire where her, her limbs had been broken and doubled back. She was really scared. Mind you, so was I. But I let her know that I wasn't going to leave her, no matter what. At that point, I'd lost sight of him. I thought I'd lost him. Next minute, Roy yelled out, cover me, Graham, which was uh, the biggest relief I'd ever heard. He was still alive. All of a sudden, fire just flashed through. I thought it was all over. I really did. And water suddenly beat the flames off us. To give some protection to where Roy was in the wreckage. We had to move guys into a position where they were exposed to danger. Divisional Officer Ray Warby was in charge at the scene. Shirley was lucky because she was in the only part of that wreckage where any person could survive. It was being sheltered by the chassis and the trailer unit. Among the more than 100 rescue workers who converged on the scene was paramedic Grant Pennycook. The big question was, how were we going to get her out? The decision was to raise the wheel assembly with the airbags. And the water itself was just so freezing, it's unbelievable. They had tried to bring in a sheet to give us some protection. I was continually talking to her, keeping her going. Have you ever been horse riding? When you get out of here, we're going to go horse riding. The firefighters were roasting, but they didn't back off. They just stood their ground. It was so astounding, the tenacity of my men. Time was ticking by. She suddenly started to fade away. And she looked at me with big brown eyes. And she looked at me and said, if I don't make it, tell my mother I love her. She just lay her head back and started to go unconscious. My skin looks great. What well, wasn't nature's treatment for soft, radiant skin? A resuscitator was passed in under the truck, and I started keeping her alive. Okay, girl. 
Shirley had been trapped under the truck for more than 40 minutes in the intense heat and fumes. My car, this is after me! vehicle lifted slightly, three or four inches, but not enough to pull her out because she was crushed right down onto the road. But we were then able to get a further lift by using a hydraulic ram. get out of there quick enough. She was away, which was an immense relief. As soon as she was on that stretcher, she knew too that she was safe finally, and she just drifted away. Roy did what I hope any firefighter would have done. But I wouldn't ask any firefighter to do it. He heard a cry for help and he responded. That extreme danger to himself. I got home that night and uh, I just cried. Twelve-year-old Shirley Young had suffered second and third-degree burns over 20% of her body. Both legs were badly broken, one so severely that it had to be amputated. She and her mother spent months in the hospital, recovering from their injuries. He comes to get me. He said he was going to take me horse riding. When did he tell you that? When I was under the truck, I think. And that's what you're looking forward to the most. Yeah. Right now, you gotta lift up yourself. Five months after the accident, Royd kept his promise. Okay. Here, hang on to the driving path. Oh. Will you stand there and the path will look to catch you. Royd and Shirley have grown very close, but she remembers little of the night he saved her life. It was, it was hot. I think I was crying. And then Roy came in, and he was just trying to calm me down. He was there for me when I needed him. OK, that's it. You're rocking and rolling. That's good. That's good movement. All he saw was this little girl's hand, and he didn't think twice. He just went in. Everyone else that was there were heroes, but he was up a bit more. Because if she had to go, I don't think he would have left her. I think he would have given his life. No, not you, Gary. That's the down under dribble. I try to see her regularly. Whenever I go out that way, I stop in. Her and I went through a very special time under the truck. <laughs> I'd give her heaps, tell her jokes, make her laugh. He's a sort of a nutter. <laughs> it's a great relationship. She's like a daughter. It was a perfect shot. When she got out of the hospital, that's it. She was out and about, even when she never had her, her leg. It didn't get her down. There's no way I, I could live without her. She's my pride and joy. Thank you. Started my drink, so you pulled her up. That's great.